four for a woman and eight for a fool. So, <laughs> now, we, which, you, if, which category do you belong if, now? If, if you read European history uh -huh. in A level, yes. So uh, I think now I'm more or less in around two hours of sleep. Okay. Yeah. So no time, uh, uh, no time to have social. There is affairs, always something for no, you to the do. The little time I get mm -hmm. is for the family, and even sometimes before you even sit down with the family, you've already received the call to go and do A B C D. And you see the uniqueness of the chief whip's office is that um, you are at the center and the different offices are coming to you uh, to carry out some activities. In their operations. From the speaker, uh, from the clerk, from the prime minister, the president, the vice president, the ministers. So you're always on call. Okay. So, but I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. I was talking to one of your colleagues uh, last year uh, towards the end of the 10th parliament mm -hmm. he was a chief whip on the other side but he told me the most difficult role is to lead politicians mm -hmm. do you agree yeah it is it is it's, it's a really really difficult because you, you know you you are pushing a national agenda and then someone says but you're taking this person you're putting in uh, what about your business what about your family mm -hmm. go relax you know so it's a really, really difficult because people believe that the extra energy you're putting in as a person is not necessary sometimes. They feel for you. You, you feel they feel for you. Mm. Uh, some cooperate. Others say, no, no, maybe there is something bigger you're pursuing or there is a certain incentive you are having uh, and you're making accountability. That's why you're pushing hard. Okay. So it's really difficult. Mm. And then also uh, you find... Uh, the work we do requires a lot of reading, a lot, a lot of reading, a lot of being up to date. You mm -hmm. have information from all sectors. You've read municipal policy statements. You're following up on all cabinet matters. You don't have to uh, be caught unaware uh, at any point. Uh, no. And then you're meeting people who are challenging the information you have. It's latest, but they have all the information and their decision is based on that. And you're like, no, no, this has changed people. No, 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 you are lying. You, how do you know? Me, I come from the constituency. I had a challenge one day on the floor. I was talking about issues of power in West Nile, for which I was informed more than the new colleagues. And they called me a liar. <laughs> they called me a liar. I also had a situation where I was... Maybe giving, each one of you had first-hand information, uh, but with the, diverse No, there's a time when I, when I had... Um, a situation on the floor mm. and uh, I was updating because it had come up uh, the MPs from northern region wanted to know about NUDIP mm. program the successor program if you're having any successor program and I was updating them that the successor program we finished consultations with the MPs and all that mm. and so we are now finalizing and it's coming to cabinet we are soon coming to parliament and uh, my brother, Anton Akor, chairman, actually parliamentary group, stood up and said, you're a liar, you're a liar. <laughs> but he had attended, he himself had attended <laughs> the consultative meetings. And I had pictures. So, okay. but now people will easily believe a, ch a chairperson of a Chori parliamentary group, mm. a person from a Chori, than me who is coming from West. So how do you and manage talking, that balance? You, you know, yeah, after you go on interacting, mm. you don't have to take it personal. Okay. You know, he wanted maybe to score a certain political point to show that uh, uh, this program came because of him. Okay? But me, you have to remain focused mm. as long as what I've put on the record of the Hansard, okay. on the record of Parliament, mm. is right. I don't mind if you say lies, if you call me what, but as long as I'm sure what, with what I'm talking about. Because it was being processed under Prime Minister's office, and that's where I belong. And there's, I something the unique, there's something unique about the 11th Parliament, mm -hmm. generally. It is about something to do with age. Mm -hmm. Born before computer people mm -hmm. are in somehow very few compared to you, the 40 years and below. Mm -hmm. What kind of hope does this give to Uganda? You know, it's, uh, I shouldn't look at it from a point of hope only. I don't look at it from a point of a chance given to a generation. Mm -hmm. And every day when I'm looking at how we are behaving, what we are doing, 
ask myself, won't we really betray the trust Ugandans have, have given us? How we Remember the first cabinet, the first parliament of Uganda, mm. you know, and what ended up happening? Yes. And the president has alluded to that. He says, I've given very many people opportunities and they have abused my trust. So it's my biggest fear. This is beyond the president. It's a Ugandan is giving us a chance. So are we looking at issues that affect Ugandans? Tell me, are we you, you're national, one of them. Are we national in we our own We are posing that question to you, Honorable. Yes, yes. Mm. Are we national in our own outlook and perspective when we are debating? Or you only stand up to speak about your constituency? But there are issues which go beyond the constituency. Are we putting national interests first? Or we are trying to move with the magical one of popularity mm. to keep our, you know, because in my area where I come from, either they are NRM, so I will just shout NRM, NRM. Or I'm in an area where it's all about abusing the seven. Every day I abuse the president on the floor of parliament, I'm campaigning. Mm. There's an MP who told me last time, he That's... said, but how come you're behaving this way? He said, boss. Me, yeah, I've campaigned. Yours is about going. I hear your people asking you about roads. What? Me in the city, we have the roads, we have water. People want me to abuse this president. So I've abused him and I've done my campaign. I'm done. I have the mileage. Okay? So <laughs> th that's a difference. Do we reflect on what we do? What do you so, see? With this parliament, mm. uh, I believe we've started extremely well. Extremely well. Because when we are processing the oil bills, We've so far processed four bills. We processed the NSSF bill, the East African Crude Oil Pipeline bill, bill, the Income Tax Amendment bill, also to do with oil, and then the Public Finance Management Amendment bill, yes. also to do with oil. All of the four we've processed, it's not politics which have led to the success. It's coming together. Mm. So, and I can attribute this to the leadership. I'm really, I, I've had battles with the leader of opposition on the floor, but intellectually, mm. intellectually. Okay. We've, we shall have skirmishes, a few of them, but if we can remain on an intellectual discourse, on engaging each other on issues that affect Ugandans, not issues that excite Ugandans, then we shall, we shall be doing well. And to my great appreciation, the current parliament, mm is doing that. We still have a wrong way uh, in terms of involving everyone in the debate. Because very few people are still dominating the debate. When it comes to raising issues of national importance, anyone can do. But issues of debating, you discuss bills, broad you go to debate.